Hello, this is Cindy. Welcome to my channel and to Fun Fold Fabulous Friday. And I think today's fold must be in the zeitgeist because I saw Nancy Burt Priest do this uh, at the beginning of the month and had decided this was going to be my fun fold for the month. And then I've seen several other videos. So we're going to be making these cute little rounds today that will look really nice in your journal. And they fold fairly flat, so you, they, they might put a little bit of bulk in your journal, but you could also use them on a cover. Wouldn't that be pretty on a cover? So let's take a look at how to put these together. So in order to do these, you are going to need eight circles, actually nine, but eight of one type of pattern that's for your flower, and then you need something for the center. And for the center, I am using just a piece of file folder. It's a little bit heavier, a little bit uh, has a nicer thickness to the cardstock. I think that works just fine. Now the eight pieces that you choose, if you notice on this one, I chose eight identical pieces of, or eight identical rounds. For this one, I alternated and I used four yellows. That's those. And then I used four variegated. That's those. For this one, I'm going to keep those yellows. I have some others, but I'm not going to use those at the moment. I need four. I'm making sure I have four. One, two, three, four. And then I have four funfetti ones. One, two, three, four. And then I have my round for the center. Now to make these rounds, Nancy when she did it used a two inch punch. I don't have a two inch punch, I have a one and a half inch punch. So I'm using my one and a half inch punch for this, but if you have die cuts, you could do this with die cuts. If you just have scissors, just cut out circles. You're, like I said, you're going to need a total of nine circles, eight for your pattern, and then one for your center. And the center one can be scrap of any sort. It doesn't really matter. In fact, to be honest with you, all of these are scraps. I did not, I, when I have an extra piece of paper left over and it's just a strip of it or something, I will oftentimes sit there and do punches out of it. And, and just, as you can see, I have a lot of different kinds. I did fail at this a couple of times and I have my failures over here. Um, I tried it with wallpaper. The wallpaper folded easily, folded beautifully, but it doesn't stay closed. I mean, I mean, as soon as you put it on the thing, it pops back open again. So yeah, that didn't work so well. Hang on, I have some uh, glue from a previous working this morning all over my hands. Um, so those didn't work. And then of course, you know, sometimes I fold it and I fold it off. So yeah. I'm going to, you know what my, my suggestion to you is? Take scrap paper and fold it first and practice and practice and practice before you try to do this for real because it will drive you insane. Because some it, it's not a hard fold, but getting it level sometimes can be a pain. So I want my folds, I have to think now which way I want to do this. I'm going to fold this in and I'm going to fold it in half and crease it down, just finger crease it. And then I'm going to open it up and I'm going to fold it in half again. And again, I'm just finger creasing it. Now, I want this to be my inside. So now what I'm going to do is just down here. Nope, I've got it backwards. Down here, I'm going to take this because I want, see how, how that makes a, like a little petal? I'm going to make my petal first. I'm going to come to my corner and I'm going to fold it up from corner to corner on a quarter piece here. And you might have to work your paper just a little bit. And then I'm going to take this end and again I've already ripped it a little bit but it won't hopefully that won't show. At my corner I'm going to fold it up so that it comes all the way up to my other marking, my other fold. Okay. So now I have a piece that looks like this. I'll put it on the 
I don't know that that's showing so well. Let me try a different piece of paper. So it looks like that. Then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to, again, keeping at the point, fold this back. That's going to pop up so that it is level with the center line. I'm going to grab that side and again, keeping it down to the point, having nails really helps with this one. I'm going to fold it down to the center point. Ta-da! I have a petal. Okay, I'm going to show you that again. So the first thing you're going to do is fold your paper in half. Fold your circle so that it is in half. Then you're going to open it up and you're going to fold your circle in half again. Okay, so now you have four quarters, right? Four quarters. That is not level at all. Why is that not level? Because you can't fold. There we go. Let me try that again. Let me fold that second one again. There we go. That's better. Now I've got four quarters. Now I'm going to pick my point and I'm going to fold up to make the lip. I'm just going to fold that up right up to the quarter line. So now I have this. Then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to, again, keeping my point down here, this is where having nails helps. You're going to kind of work the paper around. If you're doing this with heavy cardstock, which is what I'm doing right now, you kind of got to manhandle it a little bit. There we go. And then I'm going to bring this one over. Come on. And I'm going to fold it down. All right, I'm going to go ahead. I'll do it with this one and then I will, I'm going to stop my video and I am going to take a minute and fold all of these up. Fold it in half, fold it in half again. This time making sure I'm getting it in the right spots. And then I'm going to keep my point. I'm going to fold that in. I'm going to keep my point. I'm going to fold that in. I'm going to flip it over. I am again keeping my point and I am folding right to the center line. Keeping my point folding right to the center line so that everything matches up. All right, pausing my video, I'll be right back. Okay, I am back. I have just on the very last fold here and I did want to mention a couple of things as you're as as you're working with this. Um, different cardstocks are I, this is a heavier cardstock than this. So it's a little bit more difficult to work with and you kind of have to horse it a little bit um, and if it rips down at the bottom in your point that may not necessarily be a problem because you're going to cover a bunch of it up anyway so if you have to get a little forceful with your paper sometimes that's okay but what I really wanted to talk about is when you do this particular flip up you notice that this comes up. It should come up from underneath here. If it gets stuck underneath as you're folding it, then you need to make sure that you manually pull it up. See, now this one flipped up very nicely for me, but it doesn't always, and so sometimes you have to kind of horse it. Okay, now we're taking a look at the second one, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to fold it in half, but I'm not really... I'm not folding it or anything. I just want the center point. So I've decided for these, I, now on this one, I put my yellows on the outside and I tucked the other ones in. This time I want to put these on the outside and tuck my yellow ones in. Let's see how that goes. So I'm going to get my Fabri-Tac. And I'm going to do this 
so that there is glue all over this. There. And then I'm going to, using those um, folds, I'm going to put this on one of the folds. I'm going to put this one on the next fold, this one on that fold. Think of it as north, south, east, west. So now you have, those are the four outside ones. Because now what you're going to do is take your others and tuck them underneath. I like using Fabri-Tac for this because Fabri-Tac doesn't set up right away. So you can do some adjustments. If you need to move things around, you can adjust them. Sliding it underneath your petals of your other one to get it in there and sliding it underneath. So I have all eight in now, but I want to adjust just a little bit. I want to make sure I'm level all the way around. There we go. Once you have them where you are, that Fabri-Tac, you don't have forever on the Fabri-Tac, but you have a little bit of time. And if you're not completely centered there, don't worry about it, because that's what these are for. So now that you have your flower made, you want to take a button or a gem or another piece of paper. I'm adding, a, this. these are sticky, but I don't trust them. I'm putting a little bit more Fabri-Tac on there. I'm going to put that right in the center. And there. Isn't that cool? All right, we're going to do another one, but I'm going to do this one from scratch. So for this one, I've been holding this paper. I'm going to take this one and I'm cutting out eight. I'm a little nervous about this one because it's a little bit thinner cardstock, but so we'll see how this goes. This will be an experiment. So I have one and I have Two, and I'm going to do this on camera. I know you can skip through it if it's bothering you, but I wanted to show you something else. Okay, that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Because one of the things you can do if you've got that extra little spot left over. I'm going to just put, make a bunch of these with my three quarter inch punch. Hang on. I want to be able to get to it. So I'm going to cut that part off. And then I'm going to just cut five of these. Three, four, five. This is a little bonus. So we've got these extra pieces. We're going to toss those. Can't keep everything. Move that out of the way. And then all you've got to do for these, and I'm going to do this with a glue stick and a glue book. Let me grab my glue book down here. This is a side step into something else. And I'm going to put a little bit of glue on there, and then I'm going to put my petal right there. I'm going to put a little glue down here and put my petal right there. Put a little bit of glue here. Put my petal and then a little bit of glue right here. And I'm going to slide my petal underneath. Oh, I guess I didn't want it on that one. I just wanted it on this one. And now I have this cute little flower. Put a little more glue in there. There we 
go. I like the, the disappearing glue because it very easily, there we go. Ta-da! And now with just one of these little ones, I am going to use just a little bit of glue on there. Ta-da! Now you have a little flower. Aren't those cute? So there's a little bonus, something to do with some of your extras. So if you've got little strips somewhere, you can make those with them. All right, back, back to making these. So I have these. I need a heavier inside, and this was, again, a piece of heavy cardstock, so I have one of those. I'm going to fold these the same way I folded the other ones, and I will be right back. Okay, I goofed. I thought I turned my camera back on and I had not. So I just wanted to show you the other one that I made. Um, this was, again, very quickly made. It's going to be in my purple journal. That's I made that specifically for my purple journal and I had made it just to show you how to make another one of these. And yeah, there you go. I, I, I didn't get it. Uh, what I did also want to show you was that this was the other piece that I, I did was I, I did it on what I thought was on camera. It is not in my idea book. I simply put that there as a pocket. Isn't that cool? You could do it as a pocket. You could do it as a cover piece. You can do it as a piece in your journal. There's a whole bunch of uses for these. So that's my Dahlia Fold as Nancy calls it. I will put the link to her stuff down below. If you are enjoying these videos, please, I'm going to ask a favor of you. Would you please put my videos on to just play all the way through as you are crafting, as you're making cookies, as you're doing housework, just put it on in the background and let them run. I am trying to get my watch hours up, and I have to have a total of 3,000 watch hours over a total of 365 days. And the problem is, as you know, as the day moves on, the last day drops off, and the day moves forward, and the last day drops off. I need to get to 3,000 watch hours in order to offer some freebies and some new things for you guys. And I can't do that until I have those hours. It's a YouTube thing. Um, if I want to monetize the channel, I need 4,000 watch hours and 1,000 viewers. I'm not worried about that particular part at this point. Um, I'm still just having fun doing this for you guys and just to play. So, But I would love to be able to offer some more things. And in order to do that, I need 3,000 watch hours. So please, those of you who have subscribed, just let the videos play in the background. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and click that subscribe button and click the like button to let YouTube know that you're liking these videos. In the meantime, I hope you have a great weekend. And this is Cindy signing off.